Hello and welcome to Intuit Developer. In this video, we're going to talk about the e-commerce sample app. This sample app shows how an e-commerce shopping experience is integrated into QuickBooks, Counting, and Payments APIs. We'll also see how to connect an application to QuickBooks via OAuth and sync customer and inventory data between the e-commerce application and QuickBooks. Let's get started. This tutorial assumes you've created a developer account and created an app on the portal. First, let's download the code from GitHub. This sample app uses the Angular and Spring frameworks. It requires Java 1.7 to run and uses Gradle to pull in all the necessary dependencies. The project's code is broken up into three directories. The source directory contains QuickBooks-specific code for OAuth, SDK calls, and entity mappers. The source general directory contains application-specific code to drive the UI that is not related to integrating with QuickBooks. The public directory contains the UI code. Before you start running the sample app, you need to make sure to set the app token credentials in the OAuth.json file. The token and credentials can be found in the keys section of your app on the portal. Copy over the token, OAuth consumer key, and secret into the OAuth.json file. Next, open up a terminal and go to the sample app directory. Then type the following command, dot slash Gradle W boot run. When you run this command for the first time, it will take a little while for the sample app to start since Gradle has to pull in all of the required dependencies. Once the project is set up, open a browser and go to the following URL. The first step is for a small business owner to connect the app to their QuickBooks company. This gives the app permission via OAuth 1.0 to make API calls against the company's data. The IA.properties file defines property values that are used by the QuickBooks SDK. The first three values are Intuit URLs that can be considered constants. The final value, OAuth callback URL, will point to the second REST endpoint you implement in this video. To add the Connected QuickBooks button to your web page, first add a script element pointing to the Intuit Anywhere JavaScript file to your web page. Then add the IPP Connected QuickBooks element to your page. Next, you need to initialize the Intuit Anywhere JavaScript library by calling setup and passing two pieces of information. The grant URL, which should point to the first OAuth endpoint we will implement in a moment, and the data sources object, which indicates what permissions your app will be asking for. The next step is implementing the OAuth info provider interface. This interface defines a set of methods for accessing and persisting OAuth information in your app. The OAuth Info Provider IMPL implements the OAuth Info Provider interface and can be found in the controller's package. Now, let's look at the REST endpoints that need to be implemented for OAuth. The OAuth Controller class implements the required endpoints. The first endpoint to implement is the Request Token endpoint. It asks the Intuit OAuth API for a request token and a request token secret using the SDK's IA Platform Client class and persist the values on the appropriate company using the OAuth info provider. Finally, the endpoint redirects the user's browser to Intuit's authorized URL. The second endpoint that needs to be implemented is the request token ready endpoint. It asks the Intuit OAuth API for an access token and an access token secret using the IA Platform Client class and persist their values on the appropriate company. In order to make this final request to the OAuth API, you need the following values. The request token and request token secret that you persisted on the company in the first endpoint, and the verifier code, which is passed as a request parameter to this endpoint. Next, a small business owner syncs data between the app and QuickBooks. In this sample app, we're syncing customers and sales items. Clicking on the sync button for a given entity type sends all entities of that type to QuickBooks and saves the resulting QuickBooks ID in the sample app database. Let's go over the create customers in QBO method in the QBO gateway class. First, we create an instance of the data service class. Next, we determine customers that need to be pushed to QuickBooks and customers that already exist in QuickBooks. Next, we push the customers which do not already exist in QuickBooks using the batching functionality in the SDK. To use the batching functionality, we create one batch operation, add each customer to the batch operation, 
and execute the batch. Finally, check the batch operation results and if no error occurred, update the QuickBooks ID of each customer in the local app database. Creating items follows the same pattern as creating customers. However, here are some key things to look for when creating the item in QuickBooks. Set it to taxable so that the appropriate taxes are added when the sales receipt is created. Set the track quantity on hand to true so that QuickBooks will track inventory. When creating an item in QuickBooks, the item needs to be associated with the correct income, asset, and expense account subtypes. For example, the correct income account subtype for an item is sale of product income. We retrieve the appropriate accounts from QuickBooks and associate them with the item. Having synced the data, we have completed the steps that a small business owner would go through. Now let's look at the customer flow. This is the usual shopping cart flow. We add an item to the cart and then go to checkout. In the checkout screen, we've already provided a credit card that works with our sandbox environment. The customer is hard-coded to one of the customers already in our database. Once you submit your order, the following workflow occurs. The first part of the submit order is tokenization of the credit card. Intuit's tokenization API provides a programmatic way to avoid PCI compliance requirements by not having to hold sensitive card information on your servers. The tokenization API is used through a JavaScript library provided by Intuit. Tokenize returns a token for a given credit card. The send order method in public apps.js services.js demonstrates this workflow. First, we set up the credit card information. Then we call tokenize with the credit card information. Once the token is received, it's sent in a request to the orders endpoint on the server side. Charging a credit card involves two steps, authorization and capture. This process starts in the orders controller class and then moves to the payment gateway class. In a typical e-commerce scenario, a charge is authorized on checkout and later, when the order is fulfilled, that charge is captured. First, we authorize the charge in the authorize for order method. We create an instance of the charge class, set the capture value to false, fill in the appropriate values for currency, description, and payment token, and finally call the charge method. This verifies that the card account has the funds available and subtracts the amount from the cardholder's balance without transferring the funds. Next, we capture the charge. Before we call capture funds for charge, it is important to check the status of the charge object that was returned from the authorized step. In capture funds for charge, we create a new capture object, set the amount, create a date, and description, and call the capture method on the charge object, passing in the instance of the capture object. This actually transfers the funds from the cardholder's account into the merchant's account. Once we have captured the charge, the last operation we perform during submit order is creating a sales receipt in QuickBooks for accounting purposes and to provide it to the customer. In the order controller, after charging the customer, we then call the create sales receipt in QBO method in the QBO gateway class. First, we create an instance of the sales receipt object. For each item in the cart, create a line item and reference it to the sales item in question. Adding a tax ref will make sure that this line item is included in any subsequent tax calculations. To apply a discount, we add a separate line item for discount. After adding all the line items, we associate the receipt with a tax code in order to apply sales tax. Next, associate the sales receipt with the customer in question. Finally, we set the payment method reference and then create the sales receipt in QuickBooks. The created sales receipt is then returned as a response and what you see in the sample app UI. Clicking on the sales receipt number will take you to the sales receipt in QuickBooks. That wraps up our sample app for e-commerce. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. If you need any additional help, please visit our community page.